Hi guys, welcome back to another video. We have a 2011 or 12 Monashi Audi Q7. Now, what is this? Is a crank no start, so he's not running. Just came here on a recovery truck and yeah basically it won't start came from another workshop another garage and they said they believed the high pressure fuel pump was gone in it had no high pressure in the fuel system no high pressure fuel i suppose what they said to me was they had low pressure fuel delivery but no high pressure um also tested to see i don't know why but they also checked to see if they had petrol in the diesel you hadn't, the girl was driving along the road and when you were driving along the road I think they lost power intermittently and it decided to come to a halt picked up my recovery truck brought back now the first thing we noticed when it got here if you can see it in there we had safe sitting in here and we have some immobilizer fault in in the engine ECU section but I'm told by the other garage that this is not of concern why am I told by the other guys that this is not a concern? What they're saying is that there was an issue at, in, at a previous time where there was an issue with an engine ECU or it failed and that this one had been gotten and the immobilizer had been bypassed. They know this is coming up, this safe. They also know there's a fault in there to do it, in the engine ECU to do it immobilizer, but they said that it's not an immobilizer issue. It is definitely, they're telling me, a fuel pressure related problem. Now, I don't know. This is a fast little venture in at this point in time. We'll just go in, have a look, see where we are, look at fuel pressure, maybe look at engine speed and stuff like that. Um, I'll confirm. I have battery was kind of flat and I just had a car beside it running there. But So she'll crank and try to start. Kind of sounds a little bit weird. What sounds a little bit weird? It sounded like it was going to try and fire but then it sounded like there was kind of a little bit of hydro lock happening uh, again I'm going to revert and say that Sandy Anderson made a video on a Tiguan that may have the same engine it was a this is a V6 3 litre I believe V6 and potentially he had an injector gone but, but could we potentially have the same thing we have battery on charge they're asking for a battery on charge but we have a battery on charge at this point in time um, from the other yacht. but we're going to get in have a little look and see I don't know what engine code we have so we better get out Let's see if I can see C J G engine code did it give us that as an option C J G doesn't give us that as an option Okay, we'll just probably not the thing we should maybe go back and maybe manually actually we'll do that I'll stop I'm going to get back I'm going to input the details manually and we'll go from here CJ okay I man manually went in and I'm actually going into a CJG at this point in time scanner didn't pick it up we have faults in engine management or electronic diesel injection and we are doing a kind of a deeper code scan to see what we have in these modules at this point maybe it doesn't it isn't a great concern of us or to us right now but we are going in just to see if there's anything in here that's going to point us in a different direction whether you know some strange codes we just joined the dots from what we see on our code scan okay Okay, our scan report anyway, in engine management. Nothing too exciting in here. We see control module faulty. Ooh. I believe that's probably this safe and uh, programming immobilizer programming issue that we have. Mm, electronic suspension, air conditioning, dashboard. Lean for ABS, plant data, ECU for airbag, level control. Power supply, we have a relatively flat battery, so maybe that's going to be of somewhat concern, keyless entry. Engine control module, sorry, engine control unit, engine immobilizer data not adapted. 
Right, yeah, this is what the guy has sent me. Don't go near. I don't need to be concerned with it. He's telling me. So anyway, from there, look, yes. Get out of here. Okay. Gonna get into engine management. And we'll see what the story is. But again, we're told to ignore it. Glow plug six, we're going to ignore that. We're going to look at parameters. And we'll have a look and we'll get fuel. Well, he says... He says fuel pressure he's not happy with, so maybe I'm going to have a little look at our fuel pressure. Fuel pressure, specified value... Raw value. Don't like millivolts, fuel rail pressure. Not nice, I guess, that one of them is given us in kilopascals and the other one is hectopascals. I don't, again, I get kind of confused in a fast glance. High pressure. Okay, we'll get rid of that one. Okay. Basically, add a zero on the end is... Oh, okay. I was going to say add a zero on the end was going to turn me from hectopascals to kilopascals. But my numbers are a little bit crazy. What's that there? That's only 2.5 bar. I suppose when we're cranking... We're going to need about 200 bar in there. So if that's 2.5 bar, that's two zeros bigger. Yeah, that's saying about 300 bar. This thing is looking far. But right now we've only 2.5. We might get a graph going on that and just see what we have in here, okay? When we crank. Just see, can we see change in it? So right now our line is rattling away there at... I think that's the line across here at just under 2,500. Right? We'll just have a look at pressure and see when we crank. Okay, we have two items that concern me maybe here. Can I pause that? Two items that concern me here. One is while cranking while cranking, I can hear kind of like that hydrolock crack. And two is here when I'm looking, I'm far lower than what I should be. So potentially I'm thinking that maybe we have, so it's me. He states the fuel pump is gone or under, not doing his job. Um, I'm probably stating that maybe this pressure is getting out somewhere. What I might do is, it's kind of awkward to get in at it, but what I might try and do is eliminate Eliminate the pump. I don't know where it is. Eliminate where the pump pumps out the pressure. Try and, well, maybe eliminate injectors one by one. Or I was going to say that I'd, I'd block or get a gauge into the actual pump itself and try and see manually what the pump would be thrown out. There's one way of doing it. The other way is maybe blocking off the injectors. I wouldn't say individually but if I block them off I can see what the pump is able to throw up as far as the rail depending on whether these DRVs are going to be doing their job or not or what but for now we'll get in and we will um, I'll start trying to eliminate where we have fuel getting past or if I heard a hydrolock crack am I thinking it's getting into a cylinder I don't know I'll start thinking there I'll do a little bit of digging I'll see okay guys fast and dirty I pulled off the leak back pipes I meant to just clamping off the fuel to them but I just had a little fast look to see if I had any mad amount of leak back getting past any of the injectors and I don't okay I turned the key inside it stayed cranking I'm on my own here and I could see no big dribble but yet I could hear this and it nearly sounds like there's a cylinder hydrolocked here that's where I'm 
probably standing at this point in time. I'd like to pinpoint where and why and who and what. Okay guys, I'm just after doing a little bit of looking at this and I don't have a huge amount of time, so I'm trying to figure out this fast. What I'm trying to do and the way I'm going to go about it is I'm going to take it out. I have six glow plugs that are very easy to get in at. I have a very good boroscope. I'm just after grabbing the nipex and I'm after pulling off the wires off of the glow plugs. I'm hoping to get the glow plugs up and out of it fast. Send in the boroscope. Hopefully I'd see one cylinder that's wetter than the others. That's what I'm hoping. Um, relatively fast and easy if I can. Fingers crossed. Okay lads, um, glow plugs up and out of it. I'm casting it as, I'm probably wrong, but one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, bone dry, red. Two, I don't know if you can see that. Drowned and wet with diesel. Three, nice and red and dry. This is probably the one that we had a fault code for number six. That's black and more than likely not working. Dry, dry. Okay, from that, I'm fast thinking that it's in here, number two cylinder, we have a problem. Just from the state of that, which is a pretty fast, dirty test for me. Um, we well, might turn in the boris cup and see. Okay guys, I'm not, I'm not happy with what I can see or I can't make enough sense of what I'm seeing down in the glow plug hole. What I do know is that I don't want to send it down because I have seen my boroscope get stuck in there. It's quite tight fitting in the Volkswagen holes, the glow plug holes. So I'm not going to pay enough attention to that. What I do know is I had, I had a blow gun and I dried them or blew, blew the dirt out before I took them out. So they were dry. So the fact of the matter is, is that's wet from diesel in the cylinder. I'm going to ignore this, not doing enough for me. I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually plug off number, sorry, whatever I'm calling it, number two. Number two injector and see what happens when we turn the key. I'm going to turn the key first with the glow plugs out of in case I have a bit of a hydro dock, just to blow out whatever diesel is inside in the cylinder and see where we go from there. Okay. Okay? Pipe taken off, what I'm calling the number two and have a blank and cap on it. So basically what's happening now is that injector, if it's leaking diesel into the cylinder, is not getting fuel at this point in time. So the issue in theory that's seeping all of our fuel pressure away is blocked. The problem, the injector, I'm hoping. I'm gonna crank now before I throw back in my glow plugs just to dry out that cylinder, all right? Let's see okay, I can turn the key. seen that? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't believe I am. Now I have the fuel blocked in number two as I'm calling it. But this, the black, the black glow plug. This is the one that came out of that hole and was a little bit wet on the top but I didn't believe there was any issue with it. I thought that's pouring diesel out right now. I think I'm going to have to put back on that, on, turn the key again and see if I got anything better here. I'm going to block that injector anyway. I have to. That's, I'm, I'm wrong on my train of thought. I'm blocking off this Okay, one. right now, I'm after blanking off that injector over here. What was I calling it? One, two, three, four. I was calling it number four. I'm wrong on the numbers. Don't take my numbers right. I'm wrong on my numbers, I'm assuming. Say it could be number six because that's the glow plug issue we had. But that, that one I'm calling four. I have put this one back on. We're going to do the same cranking test and see if I got diesel bellowing out of here, all right? That cylinder is starting to... You can see that these ones are dry. That one's starting to dry out. Okay, we'll put it okay. back here. Six glow plugs back in. That injector blocked. That one reconnected again. Let's turn the key and see what we see. Lovely. Well, I'm going to tell you lads, it's about 
It's seven o'clock now. Very noisy. It was about quarter to seven when I said I better have a look at this thing before I went home. The generic <laughs> smile. Fast, down, dirty, five cylinder, running on five cylinders. Now, one injector after failing, don't know what happened to it, but it must be pumping diesel into a cylinder. Hence, my high pressure is down and because of the diesel getting straight into the cylinder. Engine hydrolocking, engine I suppose tone to me not sounding right. I could hear it, whatever, it just sounded queer. And here we are, lo and behold, we've an injector after failing on that thing. I won't close it up yet. I'm not gonna say please and like and subscribe and all that crack. I'm gonna get an injector, I'll sell this job. But right now, this thing is, in theory, running. And that's after 15 minutes. So hey, happy days, 20 days, 20 minutes, whatever it may be. We're going again. We'll sell the job and get at least one injector in it and see where we end up, okay? Okay, guys. We have received a injector. Bosh. Injector. And what I'm doing is I was going to put all six out and get them all tested. But one fella that's not too far away has closed down. It's gone. Another fella then that's local his actual machine for testing him the injectors has failed so he said it's going to be a couple of days before he actually has the ability to test him so purely because i have no patience whatsoever i just ordered one of these and i'm going to get in this one and get it running and then we'll maybe have a look at uh see how she's going once she's back on all six and drying out cylinders and all that it's still starting away to find us there this is a day later still starting to find us turn the key she's running the five there not a bother but for now we're going to probably get in the one injector in here in that slot that is the one we have blocked out you can actually see our blocky thing there and that's what it's running with disconnected so we're going to get in that one injector and just we'll get it coded up and yeah see what see what happens this bit is not hard and probably none of you want to really know but i'm only going to just going to show you just to see this little center tab pulls up so if i was trying to take out this injector there i just catch the center piece and pull up the two outer legs are just for pushing the actual leak back pipe back into place and then you push down that locking tab okay so you can actually see it here okay that's that bit and then there's a little spline key holding it in and you, none of you needs to see how to take off the block connector off it. That's it. It's really easy to get at for me here, so it's a good thing at this point, okay? Okay. The spline, key, spline key bolt out of it. I have given this a twist with my second hand prior, and it is coming up nice and simple and easy. The only thing you want to be watching in here is that you don't lose. You yeah, actually see that? Well, I noticed that that bolt was kind of loose when I took it out. And I can see that the copper washer anyway is going to be stuck down there, but it has been leaking back there slightly, I'd say. And probably not going to be heard because it's getting into the crank case rather than into out to the atmosphere. Like. Okay. Have a new copper washer and stuff on the other injector. Anyway. Okay, guys. What should be easy pulling out an injector was easy, but as you probably saw, when I took it up and out, I had no washer on the top of it. So, I have an injector washer pulling tool. So I got, and I pulled that out, sent it in there, tapped up the washer, and it came up with no washer. And then the washer is not down in the bottom of the hole. Okay, have the boroscope sitting in there now. My washer is after getting snagged or falling off the top of that tool and getting trapped in here underneath the rock cover. So the easy numbers don't always run off easily. The moral I'm thinking of my story is, unless I actually needed that tool, I should have tried to fish it up with a screwdriver or sometimes I use a size 50 T Torx, T50 Torx that will get wedged in the middle and I could have watched it coming up. Whereas with that, I couldn't see it coming up. It just kind of popped out and when it popped out, 
Yeah, I left a washer inside and I believe it's in here. Now I've taken out a little seal that sits around there. So that little seal I popped out, I have damaged it slightly, but I have popped it out. And I believe the washer's at the landing just down and in here. So now we have to try and go fishing this. I'm using just at this point a little, can't see it, but a bit of a coat hanger or something I'm gonna try and get. I don't think a toothpick or anything is gonna bend in around the area that I need to get in, try and get it. And I'm gonna use my camera to try and fish onto it and pull it up. That's the, the task for now. I have the wire, standard tying wire. I'm gonna go fishing off camera and see if I can get this, okay? Okay, guys. This is, I don't know where I'm even going. Okay. And you can see my piece of, in the middle of the washer. Time to start trying to fish it out, okay? This is definitely gonna be a two hand job. One wrong move here and I'm banjaxed. Woohoo! Don't know, I wouldn't like to leave it in there. See the side of it that they're eating. They're getting it away totally. Thanks to the boroscope with our side camera and a little fishing, you know. But anyway, right, time to get an injector in here. <coughs> Excuse me, new injector going in. What I find is I take pictures of all of the numbers before I put them in just for coding when they ask me with a scan tool that I don't need to go looking. I have them on my phone. Okay, so I just take photos of them all. Generally, the scan tool will tell you where the coding is. Probably don't be that one. And if not, maybe it might be that one in here in the middle, but I'd say no, no numbers in that, so maybe it's that one there. Anyway, the scan tool will tell us where it's going to be when it's going to be um, asking for the coding, and we'll get it into it now at this point. I've got in the little seal in there. I just give it a little straighten of the pliers and have it stuck into place. And now okay, she's going guys, in. I'm after getting clearance for doing the actual seals or washers on all of the injectors. I have bought, I don't know, an additional five of them. They are part number sitting in a bag inside here. And we're gonna replace them all just on, as a, what we call it, preventative maintenance. He did say at 60 mile an hour, so he was getting or going into limp mode. I'd say he's having airflow issues and stuff in here that I am not aware of. Um, so I, I'd be thinking that potentially it's gonna be air related problems he has so well, anyway not that i'm too concerned right now when i see that being that bad i'm going to say that this is going to be affecting it so we're going to get the injectors replaced out cleaned up ream all the holes actually i just realized after i had put it together i never showed i actually reamed the hole in here underneath the injector before i put in the uh, new copper washer and the new new injector into it it is running on all six again i think maybe i said that there's a day or so at the passing um but for now we're going to get them out get them cleaned up Ream the hole, new washers, back in, okay? Tark them down then. Okay guys, just for our cylinder identification, there's arrow pointing towards the front of the vehicle. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's number four that we are working on. And it's number four then that I'm going coding. The bolt has to be replaced and it's six Newton meters plus 90 degrees, okay? So fire injector replacement, six Newton meters plus 90 degrees is the torque tightening, okay? On we go, get this thing coded in. Okay guys, back in. We're on the mall. Maybe I should have shown the entry or the way I came into it anyway, but I, I'm into adjustments down here and I'm going into injector coding. As you've seen, injector number four is where we believe we're actually heading. Okay. I don't know if you want to read through this in case engine control unit replaces it. This code is shown on the injector body and is a seven digit code. For example, 781B711. And what am I doing? I have my injector here. We're going to go and see what it is and see where it is on the injector. And then we can cross reference from a photo that I've taken already of the injector. I believe I have it in my phone now. So, what I'm going to have to do, pattern break is engaged. Gear selectors in park, which it is, and do not press any pedals. Ignition on, engine off. Note JQ. I'm assuming that zero and nine characters are not valid. Okay, so JQ zero nine. Okay, into Westing. Okay, AT one CGN. We're gonna see where we can. Okay, okay so it it is the actual. You can't see it. I can see it, but you can't see it. 
A T I C G N G. So it's actually here, just along the top, that the coding is. So right now I am going to have to pause my video because it's my phone I'm recording on, and I'm going to have to get a picture or look at my image of my injector and input the value there. Okay, so I'm going to stall out now and get you back in. Hey, I may have this image of this stuck in or the photo stuck in in the video. So A A R S I S G is our coding and number four and we've proven that because it's number four because we have the image on autodata we have that code in here prior to changing it and now we're putting in this one instead okay so confirm selection we're going to just click on that and say yes adjustment successful okay that's all we're doing we're only going near number one here so we're back to errors and we are at this point clear and we have no no faults okay okay guys sorry my phone rang there in the middle of it we have no errors i think maybe i did maybe i didn't show that but we have no errors at this point in time i'm after having it out for a 10 or a 20 mile drive well i wouldn't say 10 or 20 miles 15 miles or so of drive starting driving 100 well, i have also changed which maybe I don't think I actually shown it. I did change the other five copper washers underneath the injectors as well. The bolts are to be changed. So if anyone's going to do it, their stretch bolts, make sure you change the bolts while torque. And I think I said it then, six Newton meters plus 90 degrees is the actual torque setting for the injectors, the clamps, injector clamps. I would say that then, that's it. Uh, one injector, possibly a couple of washers. They weren't too wickedly bad. A couple of washers causing a drop in compression maybe making this thing run rough but for now that's the job done job fixed and we are done on our q7 happy days guys sign out on this one any hints and tips you want please like and subscribe and hopefully i'll be able to get something for you and that's kind of it peter kennedy sign out q7 sorted out as an indicator talk to you soon guys see you next cartoon